Hi, it's Dorothy Guining with Scrapbooking Quebec. Today I'm here for the Scrapbook Nerd online shop and I'm going to be creating a 12 by 12 layout featuring Vicki Booten's print shop collection. I'm going to be sharing an idea for using beautiful printed background papers, those papers that almost look like a pre-made layout, ready for photos. I'm going to show you how to step it up a notch and how I use this paper as inspiration for my embellishing. Here's the material I'm going to be using. I have paper and embellishments from the print shop collection. I'm also going to be using the film strip die set from Elizabeth Craft Designs. The last time I checked, all of these products were available at the Scrapbook Nerd online shop, so I will link up the shop along with the products I use in the description box below. So without further ado, let's get started. Here's what's on my desk. You can see I printed the same photo twice. I have a five by seven and a four by six. It's actually Joy from the Scrapbook Nerd, the owner of the shop, who made this thumbnail for me probably about a year ago. And I thought it would be the perfect photo to document my channel's birthday. Scrapbooking Quebec turned five in January. Here's the paper I'll be using. That's that beautiful background paper. And I also pulled some other paper. I have black and white cardstock. I also have some black and white printed paper. These are both from the print shop collection. For this floral one here, you can see I cut it in half. And for half of it, I fussy cut the flowers. Now, I'm telling you right now, I don't like fussy cutting. I'm horrible at it. And I only do it when it's extremely easy. So that being said, those flowers were really, really easy to cut out. Here's the film strip die set I mentioned earlier. And you're going to see in a moment, I have a tray full of embellishments. So the first one I'm going to show you there in that pink box, that's where I put all of those papri pieces. There are tons of them in that collection. There are like 200, but they're really, really thin. I also have some stickers, chipboard, alphas. I'm showing you a handful of die cut leaves. And of course, I have my flowers fussy cut. So that's all my embellishing. So back to what's on my desk here. This is that beautiful background paper. And if you look at it, the embellishing on the page, the print on the page, it's placed in a way that's almost made to just simply place a photo on top, maybe a title and some journaling, and maybe if you want a bit of embellishing. It's a super beautiful paper. I knew I wanted to use it. I'm not quite sure what size photo I want to use at this point. Um, however, that being said, I love the paper. That's what I wanted to use, but it still doesn't feel like me. So when I was preparing this video, I got out some other papers and I thought maybe I would make myself a layered photo mat. That's more like me and it would be almost like placing a little page on top of the background paper. And by accident, my papers almost fell on the page in a border. And I had a bit of a, an aha moment. I'm showing you what it looks like right now. I thought I like the idea of a border. And what I like about it is that it's small enough so that the background paper, which is what I really do love, still to me stands out as a background paper. It's almost like I'm shrinking the background paper. So that's what I decide to go with. And you're going to see in a moment, I cut up these three papers here to form a border. Now I will put measurements on the screen for what I'm cutting if you want to follow along. And I also would like to point out that the measurements I put on the screen are for visible paper only. So you're going to see when I adhere these three pieces together, the white one is the real size, but the other two, I cut them a little bit wider and I do some overlapping when I adhere them. So just keep that in mind if you are following along. I am still hesitating between a 5x7 and a 4x6, and this hesitation actually lasts until the very end of this layout. So now I'm just adhering all of this together, and when the border is all adhered together, it measures four and a half inches wide with those three papers. So I'm going to just literally adhere it on top of that background paper. 
So now it's like my foundation page, this is how I'm considering it anyway, has shrunk. It is now more narrow. So what I'm going to do here, I'm almost landed at the embellishment part right away, but basically what I'm going to do here is I am going to be drawing inspiration from that background paper. I'm going to be drawing inspiration from the color palette, which I absolutely love, the craft black and white. I'm going to be drawing inspiration from the placement of the flowers on that background paper because it's perfectly positioned to balance out a layout. And I'm also going to be taking inspiration from the print that's on that paper. I am going to be adding more flowers and leaves. What you see me doing first, however, is cutting out a film strip. So that's the die from Elizabeth Craft Designs. It cuts out like butter. It's absolutely perfect. Anyway, off camera, I cut out two more. So those I am going to kind of layer up underneath my photo. You'll see me do that in a little bit. But first, I just want to show you what I have on my desk here. So basically, like I mentioned, I'm kind of going with the same color scheme that is already established in that background paper. I'm showing you this papery pack, which is kind of like an ephemera pack, part of this Vicky Booten print shop collection. These pieces are really, really thin. Great for layering if you don't want to add a lot of bulk to your page. What I ended up doing was kind of going through it in advance and pulling out black, craft, white, basically anything in that color palette that's already been established in that beautiful background paper. There are my fussy cut flowers and I'm showing you here. I've got a bunch of leaves that I cut out in advance with my Big Shot with some dies. Now these are leaf dies from my stash. Those ones there are from a retired die set from Stampin' Up. I think they are retired. And the other one I'm showing you right now is one, I think it's either from Cartabella. It's one of those. Anyway, they are a little bit smaller, but those ones actually are a perfect match to the leaves that are on that background paper. So basically with those fussy cut flowers and these die cut leaves, I can create an embellishment cluster kind of on top of the embellishment that's already on that background paper. And I'm respecting the color scheme, although you saw in the leaves, I added a bit of gold as well. So I also showed you the other embellishments I have, which is the sticker sheet and the chipboard sheet. And there are also alphas in there as well. So now I'm ready to start embellishing. I'm still hesitating between the five by seven and four by six. So you can see what I've done with those film strips. I've just kind of lined them up and down, almost layering them on the vertical behind the photo. And now what you see me doing is just adding some of those fussy cut flowers really directly on top of where the black and white flowers are on that background paper. Now I'm coming in with some of those leaves that I cut out in advance with the dye. So I'm tucking them in. I have black and gold. The only other color I'm introducing here is that metallic gold, which is a paper from Tim Holtz. I am, like I said, following this color palette because I absolutely love it. But I did want to add something different. That's why I'm coming in with the metallic. But metallics go well with a neutral color palette as well. It kind of respects the color palette while still introducing something different. So I have my flowers there. I have the leaves. Nothing, of course, is glued. And you can see I have a four by six photo at this point. Those are papery pieces that I put in the bottom right of the photo. So I plan to do a bit of journaling there. And I did get out the alphas thinking I may put a title on the vertical along that border. But because that mini page or whatever you want to call it, everything that I built up on top of that craft colored foundation page, it's getting really busy. I'm at this point really liking that white border. It's giving my eye a rest. Although I did put one papery 
piece up at the top on that border. It says recorded and I really like that. So when I decided that I wasn't going to put a title on that white border, which was my original plan, I went into the cardstock stickers and the chipboard stickers looking for something and I did find a few. You saw me bring them out a minute ago and you'll see me stick them on in a moment. It says this love captured. So that's what I end up doing. You'll see it when I actually adhere it to the page, but I do it kind of down towards the bottom where the journaling is going to be. What you see me doing right now is coming in with a piece of cardstock that I'm putting behind my photo. My photo has a nice black background, so I don't want to add a photo match, but those film strips, three of them there, are adding bump to my page, and I don't want to put bump in my photo. I don't want there to be creases or bumps in the photo. So what I did was I cut myself out a piece of scrap cardstock just the same size as the photo and put it behind it. It's almost a way to protect the photo. So now you can see I've adhered the 4x6 photo down. By the way, that gets switched up in the end. Anyway, back to my layout. I'm now adhering the floral pieces and some of these I'm going to back with a bit of scrap cardstock as well, because that is, of course, paper, right? I, I fussy cut those flowers and I want to pop some of them up with foam adhesive, so I wanted them to be a little bit more sturdy. You also saw that when I'm adhering the leaves, and I did it earlier as well with those film strips, the adhesive I'm using is called Sticky Specs by Ecstasy Crafts. I'm doing it with the leaves right now. Basically, it's a sticky sheet. It's kind of messy, but it does work. You put your detailed piece on top of it and it picks up the adhesive. So I have my floral pieces down. I have the leaves down. Now I'm looking for a journaling box. So the journaling box that I'm using is actually one of those papyri pieces. So I decide as well to back this in cardstock as well. Now I have used these papyri pieces quite a bit in January and February so far. And when I layer them up, behind photos, for example, I do not back them. They're thin and they do not add bulk to your layout. But my photo is already backed in cardstock and my journaling box as this papyri piece is super thin. So I was worried if I layered it over my photo and then did my journaling, it was gonna get bumpy. So I backed that journaling box in cardstock as well. So now I'm coming in and kind of finishing that corner just underneath that journaling box and I'm happy with that. I'm gonna pop up that flower with a little bit of foam adhesive as well. This is really getting busy and I'm really glad I decided not to add my title on that white border like my original plan. So I'm adhering all of this down but I am going to want a title. Now what I end up putting underneath that journaling box, first I'm putting another one of these papyri pieces there but overlapping on top of it I put this chipboard piece that says this love and then captured and I pop them up on foam adhesive and at this point I'm thinking that can be my title but in the end when my layout is finished I have three areas where I have words you're going to see it obviously on the photo it says YouTube now I have there in the bottom middle where I have this love captured and then a little bit later on when I adhere that little label at the top that says recorded and there isn't one of them that is bigger or more significant than the other. So if one were bigger I would have considered it my title but I don't really have three titles so I'm not quite sure if this is a title-less layout or not. Nevertheless all the words are there to describe exactly what this page is about. And I like it, so it's just my layout, what the heck. But anyway, like I said, when I put this love captured at the bottom there, overlapping that journaling box, I thought it would be my title. But looking at it now, I can't say that it really stands out as a title. But at the same time, I like it, so it's just the way it is. 
So you can see I put recorded at the top. I kind of folded it over. Those pieces fold easily because they're so thin. And I used my tiny attacher to staple it up there. Now I'm going into my chipboard. I found a pair of scissors there. I thought that was cute because this is about scrapbooking as well. I tucked those in the flowers. I found this other chipboard. It's almost like a little long piece that has little gold hearts. I like that. I put that in there as well. And then I decide to go into the alpha sheet and I find the number five because this is about my channel's fifth year anniversary. So I tuck in a subtle little number five there. And now all I'm doing is adding a bit of twine. And that twine, I think, is from Lawn Fawn. It's kind of neutral with gold flecks in it. At this point, I decide I want a bigger photo. Now, looking at what I had done, I like it, but I felt like the photo was smaller than my embellishing, and I just couldn't get my head around that. So I'm showing you how I maneuvered my way to add that larger photo. If it had been too difficult, I wouldn't have done it, but it ended up that that photo, the four by six, lifted out very nicely and I was able to lift up one flower and one clump of leaves and then put it back down. So for that reason I decided to do it. So that's my finished layout. Off camera I added my journaling. That's it. I hope I've inspired you to do some scrapbooking. If you enjoyed this video I'd greatly appreciate a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, I would be thrilled if you did. And if you are a subscriber, thank you very, very much. Don't forget to check out the Scrapbook Nerd online shop for these fun supplies and more. Take care, and I will see you soon on YouTube. Bye-bye.